What's up, you all? What's up? So how y'all doing today? Um, I'm going to touch on, I'm going to touch on, pause. I'm going to touch on Diddy uh, in a second. I just wanted to touch on Candace Owens and something that Alex Jones said. Um, you know, when it comes to this whole, obviously Candace Owens is linked to what's going on in um, Israel and Palestine. But I'm going to say this, right? So if we think about it, what is going to be the result of all of this? What is the result of the Israel and Hamas conflict? What is the result of <clears throat> Iran being empowered or Iran? What is the result of Russia and China coming together, possibly with North Korea, maybe even India? Um, what is the result of the U.S. being involved on all sides? Like, what is the result of all of this? The result of all of these things and throw Africa in there, throw the BRICS nations in there. Just do, just what is going to come of all these nations being involved in some type of conflict, whether it be something violent or whether it be something financial <clears throat> or whether it be dealing with um, uh, immigration. What is going to be the result of all of this? Um, the result is going to be a world war. And somebody said it in the chat, World War Three. Now, we know that people profit during war. We know that the Bible speaks about wars and rumors of war, but we also know that God talks about we wrestle, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and rulers of darkness, wickedness in high places. And I say this scripture all the time to let you know that God is telling you that what you are looking at in the physical sense is not what it actually is. So if we can agree that all of this stuff is going to lead to something, what is it going to lead to? It's possibly going to lead to World War III. Now, if we have World War III, what's going to be the solution? If we have World War III, what is going to be the solution? The solution is going to be a one world government. If you notice, what they're doing now is prepping us for that. We are being prepped for a one world government. They're going to use a global crisis where we all have to come together. So this one world government is going to be established for peace so that we don't have any more wars. I'm just telling you. So the results of Russia, Ukraine, um, Israel, Hamas, Palestine, the results of Iran, the results of China, the results of all of this stuff is going to be a global war. And the solution, I guarantee, is going to be a one world government. How do we know this? We know this because everything they're doing behind these events are dealing with globalization. And Chad said it so eloquently last night. Chad said socialism communism, and then globalism, because the goal is a one world government. So all these conflicts that we see, they are leading to something. What is this stuff leading to? If there's going to be an antichrist, if there's going to be a judgment day, if Christ is going to return, then what is this stuff leading up to? The Bible says that every, let me go to the scripture real quick. <clears throat> Let's go to the scripture real quick. Let's go to the scripture.
For it is written, Romans 4 and 11, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So we know that the summation of everything that we're seeing now on this earth, it leads to every knee bowing and every tongue confessing. So we know from a spiritual standpoint, the enemy doesn't want that. So we know that everything we see going on, that's really an attack on who? It's an attack on Christ. It's an attack on the Messiah. Because God is clear. If every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, that means the enemy is going to be defeated. And not just the enemy, but everybody riding with enemies is going to be defeated. So how do we prevent this from happening? How do we prevent this? Now, we know it's inevitable, but what is the enemy trying to do? The enemy is trying to get as many souls as he can. And so what I'm saying is all of this stuff that we are seeing leads us somewhere. Where does it lead us? Think about it. During the Peter pandemic, CNN was showing you how many people were dying every second. They had a counter. Why? Why were they showing that to you? They weren't showing you bodies. They were showing you something on TV that was counting. The enemy deals with illusions. That's why the Bible says wars and rumors of wars. And I love that. No, no. And ye shall hear, Matthew 24 and 6, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So what I'm telling you is that there's a reason why they showed you the death toll on CNN every day. And there's a reason why they're showing you images of Israel and Palestine. And there's a reason why they're not showing you images of Russia and Ukraine. And there's a reason why they show you images of black folks getting shot by the police. There's a reason why they show this to you. There's a reason why pornography is free. There's a reason. Why is the character question? And so the question I ask myself is, based on these past three years, the question I ask myself is, what is the possibility that all this is a setup? What if there's a possibility that Israel is actually doing this on purpose? Many folks will say, Blanche, you sound crazy, but do I? If the enemy is clever and God said we must have some wisdom, some discernment and understanding, then that means what things look like to us aren't going to be what they are because the devil doesn't operate that way. The devil operates in illusions. That's why when Eve looked at the fruit, she saw that it was good. What did she see before? Before, she didn't want to eat the fruit. But when she talked to the serpent and then she saw the fruit again, now the fruit looked good. Did the fruit change? Was it a different season? No. She saw what the serpent wanted her to see. We see what the people, the powers that be, want us to see. This is why my timeline is flooded with everything from Israel and Hamas and Palestine, but nothing of Russia and Ukraine. There's a reason. So who's behind the scenes saying, show this and don't show this? It's not organic. We know it's not organic. We just saw the biggest psyop in the world, and that was a Peter pandemic. We know this stuff is not organic. It's not. 
So if it's not organic when it comes to the Peter pandemic, and keep in mind, during the Peter pandemic, wasn't nobody fighting. Wasn't it so convenient that everybody was on board when it came to the Peter pandemic and these shots? Every, wasn't nobody fighting. Everybody was in agreement. That is a precursor to the one world government. Just like the shots are a precursor to the mark of the beast. Being the name, the name, the number, and the mark. Three different things. The name, the number, or the mark. What's up, a goddess Navi? What's up, angel? So again, I heard um, Alex Jones talking, and I said, finally, somebody else is asking the questions I've been asking. Why are we being flooded with these images? And we're being flooded with these images not to make us pro-Israel. We're being flooded with these images to make us be anti-Israel. So the question is, why would the folks behind the scene want us to be anti-Israel? Why would the folks behind the scene say, pick the children or loyalty to Israel? That's what it's really about. Pick the children or loyalty with Israel. So my question is why? What if, what if all this was being done to lead to a conflict? And what if the goal of the conflict is for us to have a one world government? <clears throat> let's, let's go to um, Alex Jones real quick. He just asked some good questions that I've been asking. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, you just can't fool me again. You just can't fool me again. Okay, where's Alex? Where's Alex? Because there's a lot more calculus going into this. You got Jared Kushner, you know, saying we're just going to tank Gaza and turn it into a nice oceanfront property. I mean, there's a lot of provocative stuff going on. And long compilations in English and in Hebrew saying kill everybody, quoting Bible verses, kill the women, kill the children, even kill the Palestinians' animals. So, so why, why is the Western establishment in Israel wanting to look like villains here? Why did Israel Defense Ministry leak the footage we're about to show you of what's clearly teenagers wandering around down the middle of the street in southern Gaza, which, which they were told to go to months ago, and being vaporized by drone missiles? And then, oh, they're Hamas. No, Hamas is in the tunnels. And when I've seen Israel kill Hamas leaders in Gaza and around the world, I said, good, they deserve to die. So I don't sit here and mindlessly choose a side. My side is the truth. Now, that said... The footage I've been seeing, and it's not even denied, is of a, 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 an eight-year-old walking down the street. He gets just shot. Or a mother walking down the street. She gets shot. Or Israelis bulldozing olive trees and fruit trees and laughing about it and then putting it out. I mean, if I wanted to demonize Israel, it'd be really easy. In fact, look out, because if I get attacked for this, People claim I'm making this up. I'll just do weeks of shows showing you nothing but war crimes. And we are going to show some of those war crimes, ladies and gentlemen. You know, then I ask, why are we being shown this constantly? And why is Israel putting it out and making these incredible statements <clears throat> while we're not talking about the global mass extermination that, that even rivals what Mao Zedong and the communist Chinese did? In fact, the globalists with all this lockdown starvation and cutting off fertilizer and food have already killed more people than Mao Zedong did. So there's that. So I don't lessen what's happened to the Palestinians. I'm like, okay, that's important. What about all this? So there's. And so he brings up a good point. And he's talking about 
everybody's focused on Israel and Palestine. We don't forgot about Ukraine and Russia. But what about all the other stuff going on? We just came off of over 6 billion people putting mRNA technology into their body. How, how are we glossing over that? And by the way, Israel had the highest snake bite rate in the world. And I followed it very closely because they were supposed to be the model, like Benjamin Netanyahu said, we're going to be the model for the world when it comes to this Peter pandemic. And the folks that didn't want to get those shots in Israel were outcast out of society. They couldn't do nothing. So again, like I said, when it came to the Peter pandemic, every nation, every government got on board. They were all in unison, walking hand in hand, step in step. I saw it in real time. So I saw the whole world come together over something that wasn't real. So what makes me believe that what I'm seeing now is real? And you just psychologically terrorized the whole globe just a couple of years ago. And people can get upset with me and all that, but I, I lived it in real time. I saw it. That lady, the, the, the health secretary of Chicago or whatever her position is, of Illinois, I'm sorry, she said, we're being told, basically, no matter what a person dies from, you just mark it down with the Peter pandemic. Even She said, even if a person was given two months to live, you still mark it down Peter pandemic. Even if a person was already diagnosed with something and already about to die, you still mark it down with the Peter pandemic. And now we fast forward and we done forgot this huge psychological side they play over the world. So what makes you believe and what makes me believe that what they're showing us intentionally is not being used to do the same thing? You will never see a film where the director doesn't have a point to make. You will never see anything that's being shown to you in entertainment where the person is not trying to make a point. So my question is why? Why are we being shown this? Now it'd be different if they showed us Ukraine and Russia. Then I'd be like, well, this is crazy. It'd be different if they flooded us with the Ukraine-Russian war and the Israel-Palestine war, and we flooded with so much, so many images, we was getting confused. We had so many images that we got confused. We didn't know if it was Hamas fighting the Ukrainians or if it was Russia fighting Israel. We didn't know what it was. It's not the case, though. You got one leader in Zelensky, him and his wife posing for Vogue magazine during the middle of a war, people dying, and you're posing for Vogue magazine, and you want me to believe it's real. Then we got another war where now you're showing everything. The children. The, now, now social media lets you show the images. Before you couldn't show them. Now social media says, you know what? It's okay to show them now. I was born at night, but I wasn't born last night. Larger things at play here that people aren't talking about, big picture. And it's very tribal, very simple to choose the Israeli side or choose the Palestinian side. I'm pulling back and saying, day one, why did Israel stand out? Why did Hamas know the Shin Bet and Mossad safe houses on the border and where to attack? Because they were given the blueprint of where to attack and where to strike by somebody. And I don't know who, I'm simply saying probably the same folks that ordered a stand down. So Israel would then have the pretext to go into full war footing, invade Gaza, commit atrocities, turn the whole world against Israel, and then elicit attacks out of Lebanon, out of the West Bank, 
and out of other areas. So then the ruling group in Israel that's had a revolution against them with forced injections and all the tyranny can stay in power. Why is Israel saying they're going to take them here? So Israel says these people are so bad they can't even be allowed to exist, but you're going to then give them to us? No. And as I said a few months ago, that was my line in the sand where I began to really say Israel's losing the high ground. Israel's completely lost the high ground. And if you care about Israel, I'm neutral on it. You should be upset because there's something big going on here. So get past the emotion and get real. So I get past the emotions and get real. Something is going on. Even if we don't know what is going on, we know that something is going on because the enemy is clever. And the worst thing that people can do is make themselves believe that they are smarter than the devil. You're not. Most people out here in the world believe they're smarter than Satan. You're not. The enemy is clever. The enemy knows how to get you north, east, west, and south. So with every say, everything we see going on, Satan is controlling all of it. The side you think is good and the side you think is bad. The side that wants the peace and the side that wants the war, Satan is controlling all of it. There is something going on. And I believe what they want is a global war. Because that is the easiest way to get people to buy into a one world government. And we're seeing this. The World Health Organization, the United Nations, the World Economic Forum, everybody is coming together. They already set it up. Even a one world religion, they already got Krizlam. I'm going to quote Chad again. Socialism, communism, globalism. That's the goal. So if America is going towards communism, what does that mean for the world? If America becomes communist, what does that mean for the world? Again, what is the end result of all of this? Where do, they used to say that all roads lead to Rome. Where do all of these roads lead to? I'm telling you now, they lead to a one world government. No borders, global citizen. See a video on Al Jazeera and BBC and everywhere, and I don't just believe it. I go check. Israeli papers admit, no, this is real footage. Somebody leaked it to the defense ministry, you know, a, a, a Edward Snowden type. Or maybe, you know, somebody in Israel wants a provocation and more war, so maybe a bad guy did it. I don't know. And I've watched the footage blown up very close. <laughs> it looks like teenagers wandering up a street in southern Gaza. Skip the break. Wandering up the street in southern Gaza, real terrorists would be going building to building. They'd be hiding out and waiting. They'd be in the tunnels. No, no, they're just wandering up the street. But what I do know is you can look on the footage, and we're going to show you blow-ups of this. There's not guns. There's not weapons. You can see colorful pants they're wearing under their robes. And again, Stalin said one man dies is a tragedy, 10,000 dies is a statistic. There are upwards of 25,000 women and children dead now. Five out of six are women and children. We can show you plenty of Israelis shooting little kids and laughing about it. And But my point is, why? Why? Now, you got two arguments. You got the argument of, well, they attacked, so we just retaliated. You got the argument of, well, you don't want these extremists to take over. You have all these arguments. But after the arguments get done and everybody rests their case, where does this stuff lead to? There's not going to be a happy ending. How do we know this? Because these folks have already said their plans. Do, does anybody believe that the World Economic Forum is playing? Does anybody think that Klaus Schwab is playing? Does anybody think that Noah Huval Harari is playing? Does anybody think these people are playing games? They're just talking just to talk. 
You think these folks are meeting, these global leaders are meeting, talking about the future of the world and they're just playing? If we go back to 9-11, the results of 9-11 have not changed. When you go to the airport, it's the, it's the same thing since 9-11. It ain't changed. These government powers are not going to relinquish power. They're not going to relinquish control. So whatever control you give them from now on, they're going to hold on to it and intensify it. So all I'm saying is, is the why are they showing us all of these images? Why would they be showing us images to make Israel look bad? And then why are they not showing us images of Russia and Ukraine? If you want to make Israel look bad, why don't you want to make Putin look bad? Putin said he looked in the box or something and Jesus was black. Putin said Jesus appeared to be black. Why do you think he said that? Why do you think he said that? That's right, the Patriot Act. Thank you, Rip. Because most people uh, make conservatism look cool. Most people don't think communism is bad. This is how I know this is set up because most people are going to welcome a one world government because they're going to say, if we want to prevent a world war, we all got to come together. You show me in the Bible where it talks about coming together. The Bible talks about coming together under the body of Christ, not just coming together for carnal reasons. Not coming together because you just want peace. We come together, we're all members of the body of Christ. Posting the videos themselves. You want to see that? I don't want to hear this stuff. Oh, you're trying to make Israel look bad. And there were some people on X trying to say this was fake footage. The Israeli government admits this is real, okay? So this is only a small snapshot of what is going on. And it's wrong. So I want to show you an arrogant statement before I play the video with audio and then the blow-ups of it, pun intended, the zoom in on it. Dermer, Israel will enter Rafa, so they're going to be in a whole other area now, even if the entire world turns on us, including the U.S. Israel will take control of Rafa, even if it causes a rift in the United States. And then we see the footage in the last few weeks, every day, of them airdropping food on the people by accident, the U.S., people running up to get the food, giant pallets falling with the parachutes, but still coming down at 30 miles an hour. And then Israelis just start shooting the crowd. And they go, oh no, that's Hamas doing it. I, I wouldn't put it past Hamas, but Israel keeps posting footage, bragging and joking. I can show you newscast. In fact, I will. So stop it. You can't be on Israeli TV saying we're gonna kill every man, woman, and child, then go, we're not killing every man, woman, and child. Dermer arrogantly says this, huspa, I guess is the word, bravada, hubris, Hey, guess what, Dermer, Israeli spokesperson? The world's already turned against you. And I mean big time. So, you're, you're running around with Jared Kushner talking about oceanfront property and how valuable this is going to be. I, I find it very hard to believe the leadership of Israel is this stupid that, that this is irrevocably hurting Israel. So... They want a constant war economy, like France has announced, Germany announced, and the U.S. has announced, with different enemies, and they want to be attacked by everybody because they believe that will keep them in control. Listen, I'm going to say what I said since day one when this whole thing happened. It's being done on purpose. When the Peter pandemic happened, I said, this ain't right. Who was the first 
institutions, what were the first institutions to shut their doors when the Peter pandemic came on? Who remembers? Who remembers the first institutions to say, we're not going to open because of what's going on? Who remembers? Who was the first? Thank you. It was the churches. Now, how ironic was it for the churches to be the first to close? The churches were the first ones to close without any type of mandates or anything. It was the churches. And nobody said about the thing, wait a minute, why would the churches, if, if anybody should have stayed open, it should have been the churches. Because the church deals with faith. And the blood of Jesus. And miracles and healing and all this. And they prayer and intercessory prayer. In fact, the church deals with all of the stuff to overcome this physical world. So why would they close first? That wasn't by chance. What you saw was the church submit to the state. You saw the church submit to the government. You saw the government take over the church. We saw it in real time. So if the government controls the church, you're not going to be able to serve God. Just, I'm just going to tell you that right now. If they can take prayer out of school, they can take it out of the church as well. Let me go to uh, Candace Owens real quick. Oh, man. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. if guns were just created like you know when in something's reality wrong. right but something's wrong but the thing that's so bizarre to me is that we're sitting here and we're talking about the age like as if guns were just created like you know when in something's reality wrong. right but something's wrong but what's wrong is what it it's not the wrong? guns what i'm asking you what do you think is wrong mental health right yeah. so i say i i i agree with you but i think it's the deterioration of culture altogether yep. like they used to be taught the bible it's not mental health <clears throat> What you are seeing is the results of programming. It's not mental health. It's the effects of programming. What happens when you feed somebody propaganda all the time, but they have to live in the real world? What you get is a short circuit of the brain. You're feeding people propaganda, but they live in the real world. It's not mental health. It's reality versus fiction. You have people trying to live in a make-believe world, but they're still stuck in a real one. So they may seem crazy. It may seem like mental health, but really it's just a person battling between what's real and what's not. What's the lie and what's the truth? That's all. And that drives most folks crazy because they don't want to pick one or the other. But let me just say this. If you don't pick the truth, you're going to never have any peace. If you don't pick the truth, you will never have any peace. Because what sets us free is the truth. The truth sets us free. Let's continue. 
people in school. Like, you know, people people make fun of that now. Like now we've got this culture where you're making fun of kids. Like religion is like, we're so far away from religion. Like that's like weird to us. Like, you mm -hmm. know, like teaching religion is like, it's you've got like a, a scarlet letter. If you come in as like a, a holy Christian kid in like a normal public, public education thing, you've got the family structure where it's like these kids are running the houses these days. Like I look on like Facebook and it's like supposed to be funny when like a four-year-old is acting like Cardi B. I'm like, okay, yes, it's funny because she's four, but it's also like not funny because she's four, right? Like, How do you feel about little Tay? Who's little Tay? You don't know who little Tay I is? I love Cardi B. I don't know who little Tay is. <laughs> who's little Tay? <laughs> little Tay is kind of out of the news now because they found that it's a hustle. She's know. a nine-year-old Asian girl from what, Vancouver? Is that where it's from? <laughs> And uh, she talks mad shit, throws money around, calls everybody bitches and haters. Yeah, and yeah that's my bitches. point. Like, this is considered, like, funny. It's, like, entertaining, yeah. like, the fact that and, – and we're okay with that. And so parents are pushing their kids to be more outrageous because there's a way that they can make it. Right. So to Here me, it is. it's like – Lil Tay spotted hanging out with Rick Rubin. It's like it's for, not like, over. It's, it's not over yet. It's not over. Rick wow. And so um, – but again, what Candace Owens is talking about right here – is culture. And I see Jer uh, Jarrell is talking about mental health, but yes, the, the effects of propaganda and programming are going is going to be a mental health issue because again, you are giving a person something that's not true, but they got to live in the real world. There's going to be a brain short circuit. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the after effects of programming and propaganda. It's only so much the mind can take. But I'm about to get to the meat of it. Ruben. Oh, she looks look, she's uh she like how old is she? She's she got be religious, but there's structure in religion, right? There's structure in, in me when I grew up and, and my grandpa used to make us read the Bible around the table. There was some structure to that and, and lessons and and prayers that and, and then there's this mass, the, the Facebook, the snap, the snapping, the the Instagram, the Twitter. It's like we've changed the world and expected children to say the, and stay the same of it. And nobody talks about it. So instead they say it's the gun's fault. We need to, we need stricter gun, gun legislation, but the entire world has shifted. We're not talking about those changes, the dynamic of the world that has shifted. So I, I just hold a different position. I, you know, I think it, it starts with family. It starts with structure. I think we need, we need religion back. I think that that needs to stop being such a dirty word. It needs to stop being mocked roundly by the media. Like it shouldn't be funny, you know, when Joy Behar, um, you know, know says something about jesus and, and the whole audience giggles that's weird well, she says something. now i want you to pay attention when she says that it starts with family and again when she says it starts with family what is she not saying? She's not saying that it starts with Christ. Now, folks got mad at me on cutting through the culture because I said that there are some things about Candace that I, you know, question. But I'm going to play this interview so you can hear what I sensed. Mike Pence being mentally ill. Yeah, because he talks to Jesus. That's, right. Think about how weird that is, right? Like how weird that th the stuff that we used to would be normal, like, you know, praying, talking to Jesus. Like when I grew up, that was like my grandparents' generation. That was everyone was religious. And now we're so far away from that, right? That 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 seems like like it's okay to mock and we roundly mock it all the time. So these the, the structure in the home is, in my opinion, the most important thing that needs to change. The fact that so many people are growing up without fathers in the home is something that needs to change. Letting your kid have a Facebook account when they're seven, right? Like, it just it's just too much. It's the information age. But what information are they downloading? Well, I definitely think that people need structure. I definitely think that people need family and community and all those good things. But when it comes to religion, it's like, which one is right? That's not about being right. all of them? It's not any, about being anyone. right. It's not about being what right. About, yeah, it what about Scientology? I'm, no, like there's not, I, I know, okay? I, I'm going to be honest. I know nothing about Scientology. So I'm not, I know that people hate Scientology. That's all, well, all I know about it. created by a science fiction writer. Okay. And it's all nonsense. Right. There, that's all you need to know. Okay. 
yeah, so, it's, yeah. It's one of the dumbest religions of all time. If okay. you read like what they are, what or they what stand for, what they're all about. Leah Remini, who was in it for years. Yeah, I, I didn't watch her series. She'd been on my podcast and she uh. explained her journey into it and what happened with it. So just pay attention real quick. So he asked her which religion is right. And she says, it's not about being right. If you ask a Muslim what religion is right, they're going to say Islam. If you ask a practicing Muslim what religion is right, they're going to say Islam. If you ask a person that is uh, ju practices Judaism, they're going to say Judaism. If you ask a person that is practicing their religion, they're going to tell you that their religion is the religion. Because the purpose is to get people to be a part of your religion. So when he says which religion is right, she could have said, well, not about being right, but I believe that the way is through Christ. She didn't say that. And this is a difference between somebody being a believer and somebody being a Christian. You notice I say believer, I don't say Christian. And there's a reason why. Because Christianity and Christian is a commercial term. It's commercial. The term Christian itself was never intended to be a good term in the first place. And it's funny how history repeats itself because now when the media talks about Christians, it's in a negative way. When, when the Romans were calling them Christians, those Christians, it was a negative term. Now we fast forward and it's back to being a negative term. The only difference is the folks that they call them Christians back then was really practicing believers. Well, I guess it's the same now the folks that are truly quote unquote Christians. But notice when he said, which one is right? She didn't specify, which means they're all right or they all wrong. Which one is it? And I, and I always pay attention when people don't give a definitive answer. God talks about us not being lukewarm, not being hot or be not being in the middle, either be hot or be cold. So that was an opportunity for Candace to say, well, I'm not going to say right, but to me, the way to go is through Christ. If Joe Rogan had asked me that question, what do you what do y'all think I would have said? It's not about being right. Let's continue. Someone said in her book, Blackout, she says she's a Christian. Yeah, I believe she's a Christian. I believe America is a Christian nation, technically. But let's continue. And yeah. when she started to question it, and there's a whole thing. Um, there, there's a um, what is the fucking HBO documentary? It's also the book, the uh, HBO on Scientology, the Lawrence Wright. Going clear. Going clear. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I read the book and I watched the the it's document. It's like so crazy. It, well, I, I know nothing about it besides like Tom Cruise. I'm gonna be like I'm gonna be honest. I'm totally ignorant. Yeah, yeah, it's you know, for some people, here's the thing. For some people, it's structure and it's helpful. Right. Ideologies are helpful mm -hmm. sometimes because they give you like a f like a format to live your life by or scaffolding to keep your 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 moral beliefs inside of these boundaries and it helps you get ahead and you have purpose and decision making. But at the end of the day, it's a cult, you know, right, there's, yeah. and there's a lot of them. Right. There's a lot of different ones. So like, yeah. how do you decide? I, it's if, not about you're... deciding. It's just that there, there's something that comes from, I think, just learning certain lessons. It doesn't need to be. T I'm not saying that we so all need to from like structure from structure. Like like the Bible used to be taught in school. Mm -hmm. Objectively, they, it would be taught by people that, you know, were not practicing. So, again, you can hear out of Candace's own mouth. That, again, and I'm just saying this so I can say it plainly for you. The Bible is what I go by. 
So I put God's word above all of everything we see on, on the earth. I put the Bible above it all. So if I'm talking about something or I'm looking at something or I'm hearing something, listening, I always bounce it off of God's word. So again, that's me, but I'm a believer. I believe that Christ was the word made flesh. I believe that God's word is alive. Somebody said that the Bible was history. I said, the Bible ain't history. The, the word is living. The word is alive. How is that history? The word will cut you going in and cut you going. History don't do that. The Bible is a living word. That means that when God spoke, it was for past, present, and future. That ain't history. God's word is living. History is dead because it's in the past, and it's just his story. History is a person's or people's accounts of what took place. And depending on who's talking, you're going to get a different version of it. God's word is not history. God's word is alive. It's living. History is dead. So when Candace Owens is talking right now, she's not talking as if God has the final say so with God's word. I'm telling you, God got the final say so. Ain't no Buddha, ain't no Allah, ain't no Judaism, ain't no Taoism, ain't no none of it, ain't no ancestors, ain't none of it. It's the word of God. It's Christ. And Candace Owens, letting you know right now, she's not a real believer. She likes the aspects of religion. She likes the fact that it's structure and discipline, but she really don't really fully believe the word. If she believed the word, she would at least have some conviction about when she's talking. Somebody, Jarrell, says she don't want to offend powerful people. But I mean, at the end of the day, you can't be a man pleaser. Either you're going to do the will of God or you're not. Either you're going to say God's word is final or you're not. But you don't want to offend Joe Rogan. Who is Joe Rogan? Oh, I get it. You putting Joe Rogan above God's word because you're really not a believer. But let's continue. <clears throat> and Christians, right, um, used to be taught in school objectively because there's still lessons that are timeless in these Bible stories. It's nothing mm -hmm. to do with whether or not you're, you don't need to then say, oh, and then we go to church and then we pray in school and all that stuff. You can almost extract that and, and try to teach these lessons objectively. But what kids are learning now is like, how to be an anarchist, like, you know, feminism right. 101 and every it's just, you're like actually fostering an angry culture by telling them at every turn if they should be outraged. We are mm -hmm. in outrage culture. And then you're you're surprised when somebody does something outrageous. Right. It, it's, it's a little bizarre to me. It's well, like this, everything this should piss you off. Everything should make you angry. Everything should make you upset. Everything is, is unjust. Everything is oppressed. Um, and I don't know why this kid just shot up at school. Why was he so angry? Like, it's like, we're weird. It's like, we're weirdly fake. And no one wants to have the conversation. The shooting happens and everyone wants to talk about the NRA. And then David Hogg is, is back on the news. Jordan Peterson has some interesting ideas about religion and the fundamental beliefs and um, the lessons that are learned from things like the Bible and how they apply to human life and that are our own belief systems without them, without these sort of structures and belief systems is one of the things that leads civilization astray and that it's done that before and things go awry. Well, I actually had this debate with Charlie and I did a panel um, down in DC and we were talking about whether like, you know, the reintroduction of, of God and, and teaching him to school. And I said, like, at some point there seems to be the struggle. I have this idea that like, human beings in a certain way we're doomed to just keep repeating history i'm obsessed with greek mythology i'm obsessed with like egyptian history hieroglyphics like and now i'm going to rewind what she just said and I pay attention to what she said And I did a panel um, down in D.C. and we were talking about whether like, you know, the reintroduction of, of God and, and teaching him to school. And I said, like, at some point there seems to be the struggle. I have this idea that like human beings and about these sort of structures and belief systems is one of the things that leads civilization astray and that it's done that before and things go awry. Well, I actually had this debate with Charlie and I did a panel um, down in DC and we were talking about whether like, you know, the reintroduction of, of God and, and teaching him to school. And I said, like, at some point there seems to be the struggle. I have this idea that like 
human beings in a certain way, we're doomed to just keep repeating history. I'm obsessed with Greek mythology. I'm obsessed with like Egyptian history, hieroglyphics, like anything that like where, where they tell stories, especially Greek mythology, because the lessons are there and we just keep doing it, right? Greed, lust, like the things that human beings fall for. And so this is what I mean. Now, now again, I'm not condemning Candace Owens. I'm just saying when she's tweeting all of these scriptures to Ben Shapiro, I'm telling you where it's coming from. She's using the word of God as a weapon. She's not using God's word to edify. And it's clear because she doesn't really believe God's word, but she know it makes a very good talking point against a person that doesn't believe in Christ, actually calls Christ a troublemaker, saying he deserved what he got. This is Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro, ben Shapiro always mocks the Messiah, but people overlook it because he's so smart. Ben Shapiro constantly disrespects the Messiah, but everybody thinks it's cool. He won't do he won't do Muhammad like that. You notice they never talk about Muhammad. Muhammad messing with children and everything. They, they never talk about Muhammad. And there's a lot to talk about when it comes to Muhammad, but they never talk about it. Everything is directed towards Christ. And nobody says a word. So again, based on what Candace Owens is saying. She doesn't really believe the word, but it makes for a good talking point. And she really is gravitating and holding on to Christianity because she knows it gives her some cover to go against rabbis and all these other people. This is my faith. But I know it's cap. And I know it's cap because you didn't say you were obsessed with the Bible. You didn't say you were obsessed with God's word. You didn't say you were obsessed with Christ. You said you were obsessed with Greek mythology. You were obsessed with e Egyptian, ancient Egyptian history. You said you were obsessed with stories. So what I'm telling you is that in these times, in these last days, this is what we're going to see. We're going to see people at one end saying, they believe in Jesus and Christ and all this stuff, people cheering them on. But then when they get on an interview, it's something else. That's why I call cap. And even if it's not cap, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded Candace is unstable in all of her ways. Let's continue. <clears throat> Right. So I had this idea when we were talking because Charlie is is an evangelical Christian. I'm not right. I believe in I. I this super smart guy is an evangelical Christian. Is, so yeah. does he believe like Jesus came back to life? Yes. Really? Yes. He's an evangelical Christian. So right? he believes that someone died. Yeah. And then three years, three days later, yeah. they came back to life and that they walked on water. And yeah, I, I, you, I mean, you have to, I haven't really gotten into it with him because I'm not like I'm not mm -hmm. the person that should ever be like debating or. Listen. Or, and yeah. I, I, you, I mean, you have to. I have listen. died. Yeah. And then three years, listen, I believe like Jesus came back to I, I this. Right. So I had this idea when we were talking because Charlie is is an evangelical Christian. I'm not right. I believe in I, I this super smart guy. Now, I want you to hear what she just said. She said that Charlie Kurt is an evangelical Christian. I am not. Let's look up and see what do evangelicals believe? I just went to their website. I went to the evangelical website. Let, let's see what they have to say about what they believe. And let's see if what they're saying they believe in is off base with God's word. <clears throat> what is an evangelical? Evangelicals take the Bible seriously and believe in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. The term evangelical comes from the Greek word euangelion, euangelion, meaning the good news or the gospel. Thus, the evangelical faith fo focuses on the good news of salvation brought to sinners by Jesus Christ. So this is what Candace Owens says she's not. So even if Candace Owens gets on her show 
and promotes the Bible and Christianity out of her own mouth, she is not this. Out of her own mouth, she is not this. But let's get deeper. <clears throat> Historian David Bennington or Bibbington also provides a helpful summary of evangelical distinctives, identifying four primary characteristics of evangelicalism. The first one is conversionism, the belief that lives need to be transformed through a born again experience and a lifelong process of following Jesus. That's the first one. Activism, the expression and demonstration of the gospel in, mi in missionary and social reform efforts. Now, notice it said activism, but this activism is, is Bible based. It ain't woke. It ain't woke. Biblical, biblical, biblicism, 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 a high regard for an obedience to the Bible as the ultimate authority. Crucentrism, crucentrism, cru, crucentrism, excuse me, these words are different. Crucentrism, a stress on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross as making possible the redemption of humanity. These distinctives, distinctives and theological convictions define us, not political, social, or cultural trends. In fact, many evangelicals rarely use the term evangelical to describe themselves, focusing simply on the core convictions of the triune God, the Bible, faith, Jesus, salvation, evangelism, and discipleship. Now, some of you all may disagree with the triune God part, but for the most part, for the most part, the evangelicals specifically put the word of God first. They put Christ first. So Candace Owens, by her own admission, says she is not that. So I'm going to play it again so everybody can hear it. Greek mythology because the lessons are there and we just keep doing it, right? Greed, lust, like the things that human beings fall for, right? So I had this idea when we were talking because Charlie is is an evangelical Christian. I'm not, right? I believe in, I... I this super smart guy is an evangelical Christian. Is, so yeah. does he believe like Jesus came back to life? Yes. Really? Yes. He's an evangelical Christian. So right? he believes that someone died yeah. and then three years, three days later, yeah. they came back to life and that they walked on water and Yeah, I, I, I mean, sick. you have to, I haven't really gotten into it with him because I'm not like, I'm not mm -hmm. the person that should ever be like debating or, or talking right. about religion. It's not my mm -hmm. like shtick, I guess. Again, this is Christianity one-on-one. Jesus walking on water, dying for your sins. Somebody just told me tonight that Christ can't die for your sins. What Christ did was the wages of sin are death. Christ took the punishment for your sins. You still free to sin. <laughs> you, you, you still, you can still go ahead and sin. But salvation is what you needed. So that when you change your life and say, I don't want to live this life anymore, I want to be born again. Now there is redemption for you. Now you can't go be with the Father. But again, this is Christianity one-on-one. -on -one. Jesus dying for your sins, walking on water, raising, raising from the dead, and all that's basic. So if you so if she's a Christian, these are basic fundamental Christian beliefs. This is not nothing deep. This is the base, it's like one-on-one. -on -one. So she has to agree with this stuff. She's calling herself a Christian. Now I got somebody wants to go live with me. Why? I'm doing a whole show. They want to go live with me to tell me how Candace Owens is a Christian. And the girl, the woman just told you she ain't a Christian. She ain't a believer. She might be a Christian, but she ain't a believer. Joe Rogan gave her ample, plenty of times to say, this is what it is. If <clears throat> Hold on a second, y'all. This is crazy. You hear Candace Owens talking, but you want to make it something that is not.
because nobody wants to believe that somebody would be faking when it comes to their religion or their faith. And again, I'm not saying that Candace Owens is a horrible person. What I'm telling you is that based on what she said, she's not a believer. And when I talk about a believer, Somebody said it's misleading for clicks. She did it five years ago. Okay, so as Candace Owens said, so, so what does she say different? Now, keep in mind, her husband is a quote-unquote Christian. So you mean to tell me she got married to her husband and she didn't believe? Y'all got to make it make sense. She married a man who's supposed to be a Christian. And they got married in like a week or two. So my question is, she wasn't a believer, but she told you all her grandfather made them read the Bible at the table. So Candace Owens grew up with the Bible. She grew up in a Christian household. You're telling me it's five years ago. It could have been 10 years ago. What she said was she grew up Christian. Even to the point where going to church and reading the word with her grandfather, her grandparents. She did a whole nine. So how did she go through all that? And you're telling me that I'm wrong because she's on an interview. If anybody should have been able to tell anybody about the word of God, it should have been Candace Owen. That's how she grew up. That's how she grew up. Most older black people are involved in the church somehow, some way. You go to most black households back in the day, it was a big funeral Bible on the table. So at the end of the day, she said Charlie Kirk is evangelical. When Candace Owens was growing up, what she was taught was that Christ rose from the dead. What she was taught was that Christ walked on water. What she was taught was that Christ uh, performed miracles. What she was taught was that Christ died for her sins. This is what she was taught growing up. So five years ago, she, I shouldn't have saw this because out of her own admission, she said this is how she grew up. And she even married a man who was Christian. So if she grew up Christian and she married a man that was Christian, why is she in front of Joe Rogan saying, I'm not this? But I'm obsessed with Greek mythology. I'm obsessed with ancient Egypt uh, history. But I'm not obsessed with the word of God. But I like the structure of it. And I feel folks need structure. I'm not saying that Candace Owens is a bad person. I'm just telling you all, there is a difference between a believer and a Christian. Someone that knows the word of God is, is, is the truth. Someone that knows that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life versus someone that is a Christian. So again, now people want to say that she speaks different, but if I get accused of using clickbait, you got to tell me, you got to make it make sense because the woman says she grew up Christian. So either we're going to admit that she wasn't a believer she was just playing a role all these years and then she had a conversion. Well, give me the story about her conversion then. Cite me the video where Candace Owens said, I wasn't a believer before, but now I am. This is what changed my mind. Just show me the video. Show me the video of Candace Owens. Say, you know what, y'all? I really wasn't a believer. I was more into this, more into that. Just show me the video. I want y'all to shut me up. I want y'all to make me say, you know what? I'm wrong by what I'm saying. Candace Owens, I apologize. Just cite me to the video. 
Show me the video. Show me the video of her rectifying what she said in front of millions on Joe Rogan's podcast. Show me the video of her saying, I repent for what I said on Joe Rogan's podcast. Since I'm doing it for clickbait, since I'm so wrong, since she's talking so different, show me the video where she rectifies all of this. So again, all I'm saying is, is that this is very telling to me. For her to grow up Christian, for Charlie Kirk, her good friend to be an evangelical Christian, for her husband to be Christian, I just find it kind of hard to believe that she would have these stances. I just find it difficult to believe. It don't make any sense to me. And I'm not saying that people can't grow. I'm not saying that people can't, you know, uh, get a better relationship with God or give their life to Christ. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is what she said on this podcast needs to be rectified. Most folks out here are looking for a person with a big name to give them a way out. You don't really have to do it God's way. It's not about the right way or the wrong way. It's about your way. There's many ways to go to God. We got to rectify that kind of talk if we're believers. If we're not believers, anything goes. But we're calling ourselves believers and Christians. That has to be rectified. We got to say, no, I was wrong. When I was in the world like that, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was hypocritical. I was wrong. And if I ever gave a message that was anti-Christ, or anti the word, I repent. I don't want to be a stumbling block for anybody. So again, just show me the video where Candace Owens said, now I see the light. Yeah, I'm not trying to um, cancel Candace Owens. I'm just saying that if people are going to say that they are of the faith, then they need to be held accountable. So again, other religions do this. Christians don't do it because you can't judge. There's nowhere in the Bible that you can't judge, but people say you can't judge and nobody's perfect. I call cap. I call cap. When people say that don't judge, let me sin in peace. People say nobody's perfect, let me sin in peace. That's all they're saying. Just a fancy way of saying let me just sin in peace. Nobody's trying to cancel Candace Owens. This ain't clickbait. All I'm saying is, is that she said these things. Not me. She said it. And I was sent a small clip, 30 seconds. And I said, let me give her benefit of the doubt. Even though there's no benefit in doubt. I said, let me give her the benefit of the doubt and listen to the whole thing in context. And listen to the whole thing in context. You see that Candace Owens is a Christian but she's not a believer because like when you hear Chad talk, Chad might talk about some political, economic, cultural, and social, but Chad always bring it back to Christ. And so again, when I'm hearing Candace Owens talking, I don't hear her summing it all up to get people to Christ. Just like we heard MLK never give somebody the offer the gift of salvation. The Reverend MLK, Martin Luther King, he never offered anybody the salvation to go to Christ. I wonder why. Why don't I see these folks that believe in God so much and are such Christians never offer salvation? She's online 
fighting the Jews with God's word. So if you're going to use God's word to fight against the enemy, then use God's word to bring people to God. Use God's words and make that enemy a believer. That's why the Bible tells us to pray for our enemies. We should be praying for these rabbis, these wicked rabbis. We should be praying for them. We're supposed to be praying for Joe Biden. We're supposed to be praying for Kamala Harris. And I know it sounds crazy, but that's God's word. We're supposed to be praying for Hamas, praying for these Palestinians, praying for these Muslims, praying for these Israelis, We're supposed to be praying for Putin and Xi Jinping. That's God's word. We're supposed to pray for our enemies and those that despitefully use. We're supposed to be praying. Because as believers, we have a mind like Christ. We don't have a mind like the rest of the people in the world. So again, our task is to be like Christ. Where we say things like, forgive them for they know not what they do. So again, I'm not condemning Candace Owens at all. I like Candace Owens. I'm just saying she's not a believer based on this. But if y'all could show me the video where she said, I get it now, or I made this make sense, or what I said back then wasn't right, I'm I'm very, I, and I, and I want to see it. I actually want to see the video where she says that. But let's finish this one, though. <clears throat> Um, but so what I, what I said to him, because me and him both believe that in many ways, the reason that the government has, uh, the media has started roundly dissing God, right? Like, and dissing Jesus Christ is because the government wants to be God, right? So if, if people Wait don't- Wait a minute. Do you think the media is responding to the government's suggestion? Is that what you think? The reason why people are going yeah, after so, religion is yeah, because the so media think, is responding to yeah. some sort of orders from the government? Not orders. That's that's wrong. So it's some it's, it's directive. It, no, no. But you know, Andrew Andrew Breitbart said that politics is downstream from culture, right? So, and you can argue that they they feed into each other, whatever it is. But there's there's definitely something um, between culture and politics that is linked, inextricably linked. Um, so uh, when you know. When, it, when everyone's on the same page, like, so if the government wants to get bigger, which it has been doing, right, mm -hmm. and wants people to look to them for answers, which it has been doing, you have to understand they have to sort of destroy everything else that they would potentially be looking to for answers, right? right? So instead of when, when you're down and out um, and you, people would just go to church and pray, right, or believing in your family or the family structure, they need to know that no matter what, you think the government is the answer. And that is what a leftist, at the end of the day, the left believes that the government can fix all of their problems. And uh, and I find, especially when I speak to all leftists, they do not believe in religion. Like, there's just a thing. It's a trend. I've noticed that, you know, I'm mm -hmm. not religious. I'm not saying that, you know, there's something wrong with it, but leftists tend to be, you know, a, a really apart from religion. So you could make, the argument could definitely be made that the destruction of believing in the Bible, of stop teaching the Bible, is because you want to make it so that every time you have a problem, because you're still gonna, our soul, we still need to believe in something. We're naturally beings that we need to believe that something can fix something. I really believe that, that mm -hmm. it's the reason why we go get our palms read, right? Like we just like, there's there's something else, somebody has the answer. And people are starting to believe it's government in America. Well, And it freaks me out. <laughs> I, I agree with you that people like structure, and I agree with you that people without religion try to find that structure and those rules and other things. Correct. But I don't believe that this is like some calculated no, move not by the cal government. No, not, not calculated. I think it's human but... nature. I think it's Man, yeah, it's calculated. Not calculated. It's calculated, Joe Rogan. Joe, Mr. Rogan is calculated. These people are anti-Christ. Why don't nobody want to say it? Do you believe that they can vote on banning the Bible? What would you think people would vote for? If people could vote on whether we had the Bible or not, how many votes do you think that would get? It's, it's an intentional agenda. You can openly mock believers. You can openly mock the Bible. You can openly mock Christ. You can't openly mock Buddha. You can't openly mock Muhammad. You can't openly mock that lady with all them arms. You can't openly mock no other religion but Christianity. 
So don't tell me it's not intentional. It's a concerted effort. It's a concerted effort to get rid of the Bible. So much to the point where they're even demonizing white people that dare to say that they're evangelical Christians. What are we talking about? Yes, yeah, intentional. It's done on purpose. I don't want to believe that. The government's involved in all these plots, but suddenly Joe Rogan says, well, they wouldn't do that on purpose. Are you nuts? Has the steroids go to your brain, Joe? Joe, have the steroids gone to your brain? Of course, it's intentional. What are we talking about? All these government conspiracies, but that one is not true. Get out of here. Do you think Joe Biden ain't against Christ? Have you listened to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris talk? Do they sign they for Christ? Have you listened to BLM? Have you listened to all these people talking in the U.S.? Do they sign they believe in Christ? Honestly. Talking about climate change, the Peter pandemic, abortion. Have you, do they sign they pro-Christ? Everything these folks want to do, everything these folks want to do is everything that Christ would say no to. So how is Christ not the enemy? If I'm following Christ and Christ is against everything they're doing, then who y'all going to go after? You going to go after Christ. Come on. Thank you. Making conservatism look cool. They removed the Bible. What you mean it's not intentional? They took prayer out of school. What you mean? They weren't talking about praying. To, you can still pray to Allah in school. You can pray to Buddha in school. You can get that lady with all them arms, all that, give her dap all the way around. That's that. You can still do all that stuff. You can still worship Buddha in school. You can do all that stuff in school. What you can't do in school is say, we're going to pray in the name of Jesus or Yeshua. Hamashiach, you can't do that. So, of course, it's intentional. Don't nobody bother the Muslims. Don't nobody bother the Buddhists, the Buddhists. Nobody bothers the, bother the people that worse, uh, follow Judaism. They only bother one religion, and that is Christianity. So don't tell me it's not uh, intentional. It is very intentional. Because everything they want to do is literally anti-Christ. It ain't anti-Buddha. It ain't anti-Muhammad. It ain't anti-Judaism. It ain't anti them other religions, but it's anti-Christ. So, of course, it's intentional. <clears throat> of course, it's intentional. So, again, so, again, um, I'm not against Candace Owens. I just simply said, I was sent a clip and I want to give her a benefit of the doubt. So I wanted to watch the full clip of what she was talking about so that she was not taken out of context. Now, if you all are telling me that Candace Owens has changed her tune, then just show me the video where she said, I've changed my tune. I don't trust anybody that switches up their tune without addressing what they did before. Part of repentance is you come and you acknowledge what you did wrong in the past, where you fell short. That's a part of repenting. A person that does not do that has a prideful spirit. So it's very prideful to not address what you've done in a public forum in front of millions. I have an inaccurate interpretation of what I'm saying. Does anybody feel that I'm inaccurate in what I'm interpreting? I thought I was pretty clear. I thought I thought I was very clear. I thought I just stated that it was intentional. You see, unlike the people talking on this podcast between Joe Rogan and Candace Owens, I'm not lukewarm. 
I'm very clear in what I say. <clears throat> so again, this is not a condemnation of Candace Owens or Joe Rogan. I hope and pray that Candace Owens is a believer. What I'm telling you all is this clip does not say believer. This clip is very new age and there's multiple ways to get to salvation and there's not. And we got to be bold and say that. If the world is bold enough to mock and say this ain't this and Jesus would, these folks then said Jesus, Jamal Bryan got in the pulpit and said that Jesus was out of order 80% of his life. And nobody said nothing. Senator Warlock said that Christ would be pro-abortion and nobody said nothing. But now I'm interpreting something wrong. But now what I'm saying is wrong. That's why I don't listen to y'all. This is why. Because when somebody says something egregious and crazy, like I'm obsessed with Greek mythology and I'm obsessed with ancient Egyptian history, but when it comes to the word of God, eh, that ain't really my thing. Eh, that ain't really my shtick. That's cool. But when I say, no, the way, the truth, and the life, now I got everything. I, now I'm confused. Boy, it's a cold game. It's a cold game. And these folks want me, uh, just, a, just imagine the level of narcissism for a person to think, I'm going to stop my show. I'm on YouTube. It's, I'm going to stop my show to give them a platform. If you feel so strongly about what I'm doing, go on your page and point out everywhere I got it wrong. If, if I'm so wrong, go on your page and point out everywhere I got it wrong about Candace Owens. Look at Danny. Bless his, bless his heart. Danny said, how do you compare Jamal Bryant to Candace Owens? Bless his, bless his heart. Wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all thy getting, get understanding. If at the end of the day, Jamal Bryant don't believe in Christ and Candace Owens don't believe in Christ, their faith's going to be the same. I'm just telling you that based on what Candace Owens said in this video, which none of you all are addressing, conveniently, Everybody's leaving out this video that I just played. They keep skipping over what she said in this video and keep addressing me. She said this, not me. And y'all got a bad habit of skipping over what these people say and getting mad at me when I'm responding to what the people said. So again, and somebody said it, we got to believe in the divinity of Christ. Christ ain't just no prophet. He's not just a man. I'm not going to let y'all come up here. He said, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that. So again, you come over here. I'm going to give the Bible. I'm going to give God's word. I'm going to give the Messiah all the reverence that the world gives the other religions. Oh, when you come over here, I'm giving the, the, the God's word the same reverence the world give everybody else. <clears throat> so again, Again, I've asked you all, I've asked you all to cite a video where Candace Owens said that 
I believe in Christ and explain who Christ is. And the reason why I say explain who Christ is, because we have you on record saying that you aren't this type of believer. So that has to be cleared up. People are going to be confused. You have me on live repenting for stuff I said in the past online, who I condemned in the past online. I got videos doing that because these are the things that edify people coming to Christ so they can understand. You can't just say that uh, religion is not my stick and then you come back talking about Christ this, Christ that. That's a big gap. How'd you go from religion is not my stick to Christ this, Christ that? You got to make it make sense. Because to most people, God's word is confusing. And it's confusing because most folks don't spend time with God. They spend time in the world. And the world has an entirely different language than God does. And you put all your all of your time and efforts and thoughts into this world, you are not going to understand the things of God. So again, I am not condemning Candace Owens. I've asked you all to show me the videos. But we're not just going to say, Blanche, I done cut up all these years, and then I come on here and I'm preaching. That's not how that works. I got to humble myself, not just before God, but even the people. Because I was leading the people astray. And if I led the people astray, I mean, I got to ask for forgiveness for that. Forgive me for saying something that was wrong to the people. Forgive me for leading people away from God. I got to ask for forgiveness, not just from God, but from the people, the congregation, the viewers, the listeners. Yeah, I said it because to whom much is given, that much more is required. And so Candace Owens, based on her brilliance and her success, to whom much is given, that much more is required. Since I can't interpret the word, since I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> since I don't know what I'm talking about. Since I'm condemning her so much. You want me to rewind the video? Okay, I'll rewind it. All right. And then David Hogg is, is back on the news. Jordan Peterson has some interesting ideas about religion and the fundamental beliefs and um, the lessons that are learned from things like the Bible and how they apply to human life and that are our own belief systems without them, without these sort of structures and belief systems is one of the things that leads civilization astray and that it's done that before and things go awry. Well, I actually had this debate with Charlie and I did a panel um, down in DC and we were talking about whether like, you know, the reintroduction of, of God and, and teaching him to school. And I said, like, at some point there seems to be the struggle. I have this idea that like human beings in a certain way, we're doomed to just keep repeating history. I'm obsessed with Greek mythology. I'm obsessed with like Egyptian history, hieroglyphics, like anything that like where, where they tell stories, especially Greek mythology, because the lessons are there and we just keep doing it. Right. Greed, lust, like the things that human beings fall for. Right. So I had this idea when we were talking because Charlie is is an evangelical Christian. I'm not right. I believe in I. I this super smart guy is an evangelical Christian. Is, so yeah. does he believe like Jesus came back to life? Yes. Really? Yes. He's an evangelical Christian. So right? he believes that someone died. Yeah. And then three years, three days later, yeah. they came back to life and that they walked on water. And yeah, I, I, I mean, you have to, I haven't really gotten into it with him because I'm not like, I'm not mm -hmm. the person that should ever be like debating or, or talking right. about religion. It's not my mm -hmm. like shtick, I guess. Um, but so what I, what I said to him is me and him both believe that in many ways, the reason that the government has. Uh, now, the things that Joe Rogan said to her were basic Christian beliefs. Jesus being resurrected is actually a holiday that the country celebrates. Jesus walking on water 
is basic, basic Christianity. So she says, I'm not evangelical. And we went through what an evangelical Christian is. It's very specific. That's why the, the media, the liberal communist media demonizes evangelical Christian white people. There's a reason why. Because the evangelical Christians put the word of God first and they view Christ as not only their savior, but their Lord. This is what makes the evangelical the biggest threat. Candace Owens said she was not that. So if Candace Owens does not put the word of God first and does not see Jesus as her savior and Lord, then that means she's not a true believer. She can be a Christian all day, but she is not a true believer out of her own mouth. And she had debates with Charlie Kirk. What are y'all debating about on those topics? Those aren't debatable topics if you're a believer. And Joe Rogan, I'm glad he went specifically and said, so this intelligent guy believes that he rose from the dead, believes that he walked on water. She should have said, and I do too. Now keep in mind, Candace Owens said that she grew up Christian and she married a man that was Christian in two weeks. So I'm pretty sure in my mind, I'm thinking that maybe some of his Christian values are what attracted her to him. And her grandparents raised her to be Christian. So her foundation of upbringing, even marriage, is based on Christianity. So for her to get in this interview, I don't care if it was five years ago, she should have never said the things she said in this video. This should have been a perfect opportunity, a perfect one to let everybody know how she really feels about Christ. How bold and confident she is in the word. Now, it's funny to me, when she's going against the rabbis, she big and bold. But when she on here talking about Christ with Joe Rogan, it's kind of like, eh, it ain't really my shtick. This is what she said. And again, I'm not condemning Candace Owens. I'm simply saying, show me the video where she said, I was in error on this right here, and now I feel this way. This is what helped me transition. This is what helped me change. This is what I did. I prayed to God. People need to hear these testimonies. There are many people out there hoping and begging and pleading for God to give them a sign. There are many folks out there begging for to get a word from God. There are many people out there begging God on their hands and knees for revelation. But most oftentimes, what these people are praying for, these revelations, these miracles, this prophetic word from God, all these things is going to come through us. It's going to come through us. So folks are tuning in, listening to us. There's folks listening to us to right now on the brink of suicide. There's folks listening to us right now have, that have lost all hope in God. There are folks listening to us right now that have given up on life itself. So when they listen to us speak and they respect us, we have to be edifying. We have to be edifying the body of Christ. We just experienced over these past four years how wicked and demonic and satanic this world really is. We just saw the devil in real time come from behind the curtain. Now more than ever, believers need to be bold when it comes to the word of God. And again, to whom much is given, that much more is required. And that also applies to Candace Owens. And it also it applies to me and everybody listening. I'm not even separating myself from the things I'm saying to Candace Owens or to you all. <clears throat> Kena says, five years ago, she could have definitely changed and grew in her faith, but she also has responsibility as a believer with the platform, and she's smart enough to comprehend that is if she's a true believer. Yes. And so and so my thing is with with anybody with a platform with a great following is that if you're going to say you are a believer, if you're going to say you are a Christian, now if you don't say that and I don't say nothing about it. But if you but if you're going to say this, if you're going to be going after 
the, the wicked rabbis, if you're going to be taking going after the evil Jewish empire, then and you got believers and people rallying behind you. My whole thing is we got to be edifying God because the ultimate because the end of the end of the day, you need to be bringing folks to Christ. Because the fight ain't really against the rabbis, the fight is to win the souls. The fight ain't really against the porn industry. The fight is to really get the souls to God. That's the goal of it. The fight ain't really the left versus the right and the right versus the left. The fight is really a battle over the souls of this world. You got the enemy that wants everybody to perish and you got God wants everybody to live. With him, I might add. So again, that is the intent of all, of all believers supposed to be. She said on her show that when she met her husband, he asked her if she wanted to get married. And she said, yes, because it sounded like a good idea. <laughs> well, he he talked about their, their marriage. Um, but again, again. Somebody said, is Beyonce a cultural appropriator now that she's a country singer? Uh, yes, she is. She is. Because Beyonce went over to the country music and accused him of being racist. So she's worse than an appropriator. She's a charlatan. She's a Jezebel. She's a thief. So she's worse. Beyonce went to country music and accused him of being racist. She's worse than an appropriator, if you want to get technical. She didn't go to country music with good intent. She went to find another lane because she knows her lane is closing. She can't out-ratchet Sexy Red and Sukiyana. She can't out-ratchet these new artists coming up. She can't compete with them. So what she has to do is find another lane. So she's worse than an appropriator. She's a, she's a destroyer. Since y'all want to ask. Yes, people have the right to have their own beliefs. And they own whatever. I'm just saying, last night, I was accused of siding with the, 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 the Jewish community over Candace Owens. So I wanted to clarify today what I was feeling about what she was doing. And I went to, and I received a video. It was 30 seconds. I said, nah, let me go listen to the whole thing. So I can make a better assessment because I can't, they can be out of context. And so again, I don't have a problem with Candace Owens. I'm actually a fan of Candace Owens. I'm actually a fan of Joe Rogan. I don't have a problem with these people. But when we're talking about the word of God and we're talking about Christ, we're talking about salvation. That's where I'm going to get serious though. That's where I'm going to get serious. <clears throat> tell Blanchard, tell your audience how Jews are Christians. How Jews are Christians. You see how crazy people are? Do you see how crazy these people are? Jews are so non-Christian that when they believe in the Messiah, they have a whole different title, a set, subsect of Judaism. <laughs> they're like they're so not Christian that they have a whole different subtitle when they aren't. Or when, excuse me, when they are. What are we talking about? Jews are Christians? These people are crazy. I, listen, I told y'all, the biggest gripe that folks have with me is this word. 
it ain't me saying the black man is weak. It ain't me saying that black culture is deaf culture. It ain't me saying that being black is anti-God. That ain't it. The biggest gripe is God's word. I'm telling y'all. This girl just said, I want to get on live. And her, her, her thesis statement is, tell them how the Jews are Christian. Boy, listen, these people crazy. These people, I'm, I, listen, they will tell you they're not Christian. <laughs> this is crazy. It's crazy. Thank you, uh, right, Messianic Judaism. Thank you. That's my point. Because they don't believe in the Messiah, they have to create a whole subcategory when they do. Come on, y'all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, making conservatism look cool. Thank you. Thank you. Messianic Judaism. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to play one more clip. I want to play Candace Owens' um, um, husband on how they got married. I mean, I think it's a good story. I just, you know. I, I don't have an issue, again, with Candace Owens' marriage or anything like that. I just saw this clip and I was like, I thought, I thought it was good. <clears throat> um, we had dinner on December 12th. It was about a week later on December 18th that I had the, the car ride, right. the car journey. Um, the next day I flew to the US. That was when we spent three days together just mm -hmm. getting to know each other. Then I flew back back to England for Christmas, gotcha. spent Christmas with my family. And then the week after Christmas was the week that I called her a couple of times, started to get to know her. You know, we I said, hey, do you want to FaceTime? It was like I was expecting like a 10 minute FaceTime. We ended up FaceTiming for like three and a half hours. And then on December 29th, I asked her to marry me. Wow. I mean, it was crazy. I mean, everyone thought I was mad. Everyone thought we were both mad. You know, I mean, it was just nuts. One of my sisters was sort of she, she actually just laughed about the whole thing she was just like this is this is so not you but it's also very you you know and so she kind of she came out with that line which i thought was quite a funny way of putting it we met on december 11th um we had dinner on december 12th it was about a week later on december 18th that i had the the car ride right. the car journey um the next day i flew to the us that was when we spent three days together just mm -hmm. getting to know each other then i flew back back to england for christmas gotcha. spent christmas with my family and then the week after Christmas was the week that I called her a couple of times, started to get to know her. You know, we, I said, Hey, do you want to FaceTime? It was like, I was expecting like a 10 minute FaceTime. We ended up FaceTiming for like three and a half hours. And then on December 29th, I asked her to marry me. Wow. I mean, it was crazy. I mean, everyone thought I was mad. Everyone thought we were both mad. You know, I mean, it was just nuts. One of my sisters was sort of, she, she actually just laughed about the whole thing. She was just like, this is, this is so not you, but it's also very you, you know? And so she kind of, she came out with that line, which I thought was quite a funny way of putting it. We met on December 11th. Yeah, so basically, um, Candace flew over there to England for something. And that's where they met. Initially, they met in England because she went over there. I heard her tell part of this story where they flew over there. And then, you know, they basically got married in, in two weeks. Um and they're still married to this day, um, you know, so I guess clearly it's, it's love. Uh, and clearly it was something that was wonderful because he spoke with her, she spoke with him, and they got together and everything was good. Um, you know, but, um, but you know, <laughs> that's funny why you get this bread. Um, but again, um, I just think it's a good story, you know, good love story. Um, I applaud them for getting married, going through with it. Um, they got married kind of quick, but it is what it is. Um, you know, it, it it helped that he was rich, you know. I don't think it was very hard on her end to marry him, you know. Um, 
you know, a uh, rich guy, part of a rich family. It wasn't too difficult to, uh, you know, <laughs> it was a no brainer almost. But anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop that. Um, yeah, arranged marriages are statistically better than regular ones. Low, way, it's way lower divorce in arranged marriages than there are in, I guess, traditional ones. And I would say that's because in an arranged marriage, um, usually the people that's doing the picking have non, um, uh, the, their expectations are, aren't fantasy. It's like, so they're looking at it stuff very almost logically and very um, knowing how their daughter is, knowing how their son is. It's like, it's not a, you know, fantasy, a whirlwind. Less, it, it's more, very more sober minded when it's an arranged marriage. It's very, it's very sober. It ain't all this, you know. And so when people come together, they come together and it's like, okay, we were put together by our family, so let's try to make this work. So you have the support of your immediate family on both sides. You know, I, I don't know. I think it could work. I think arranged marriages could work, you know. Um, that's just my opinion. Uh, but let me get to um, these um, super stickers. No, Candace is... Listen, da Danny, listen, Danny, Danny, listen, Danny, listen, Danny. When I'm talking and I'm saying something, I'm not talking out the side of my neck. Everything I'm going to talk about is going to be in context. When Candace Owens met this guy, she was not rich. He was rich. And you look now, he's still rich. He still got way more money than she got. So again, when she met him, he was rich. His family is wealthy. What are we talking about? Candace Owens' family ain't wealthy. Goodness. Come on. <clears throat> Making Conservatism Look Cool podcast. This whole Israeli Palestine is a distraction from all the real issues. Got even some of these so-called conservatives invested in all of this. I agree. Because behind the scenes, what we got to be worried about. What, what are these folks doing behind the scenes? I'm telling you, they got something coming for us, boy. And it's going to be, it's going to hit everybody. Man, please. Come on, man. Thank you, uh, Make Conservatism Look Cool. Thank you. Cruise Missile, thank you so much for your support as well. Angel Wings, thank you so much for moderating. They're asking you if you can rewind the video. Thank you so much. Uh, Miss Reed, thank you. Told you they said it was a good idea. Great show. Thank you uh, so much, Miss Reed. I really love y'all. Thank y'all so much. Now, now I've been told I'm dead wrong. Well, Israel said they now the enemy is is cap. It is cap, Tanya. It's all propaganda. It's all listen, it's all propaganda. I ain't trying to, I ain't, I ain't listen. Listen, you can't get me no more. 2020, I can't get got no more. I'm sorry. You shouldn't have did it. I'm shell shocked. They not they lied about 9-11. Everything else, gloves off. Folks been lying this whole time. <laughs> uh, listen, I love y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning in today. Uh, I, I had a great time with you all today. Uh, Danny, we still cool. Um no, no hard feelings. Um, this young lady, uh, what's her name? Um, Beverly Chica, Beverly Chica. We still cool. Um, but anyway, uh, I love y'all. I thank y'all for tuning in and, and uh, I will see you all again on uh, Wednesday. Thank y'all so much. And thank you, Angel, 
for moderating and a goddess Navi. Thank y'all so much. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> I was being sarcastic. It's called a joke. Of course I'm being, it's a joke. Of course I'm a joke about he was rich. Of course I'm a joke. She met a guy that was a good guy in her opinion, looked good in her opinion, and he was rich. It's a no-brainer. What are we talking about? Of course I'm being sarcastic. Of course I am. She went to England. She met a she met a guy she thought was nice and handsome with the English accent, and he's rich. It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Could y'all imagine if I was could y'all imagine if I was rich and I sound like Idris Elba? Game over. Could y'all imagine if I was rich and I sounded like Idris Elba? Game over. Women would be in my DM right now proposing in my DM right now. What are we talking about? It's a no-brainer. Come on, y'all. Of course I'm being sarcastic. <clears throat> anyway. I love y'all. I thank y'all so much. And I will see y'all. Uh, <laughs> I will see y'all uh, on uh, Wednesday. Thank y'all. Yeah, and yeah, Candace Owens is good looking too, though. Yeah. It's a no brainer, man. Just imagine a guy. All jokes aside, just imagine a guy that that actually meets a young lady that's intelligent, that looks good. Like it, it's a, it, it becomes a no brainer, you know what I mean? So I'm again, you know, I ain't got no problem with Candace Owens. Anyway, I love y'all, and I'll see y'all on Wednesday. Thank y'all.